Good morning, Calvary Chapel, Half Moon Bay. Good morning, children. How are you this fine morning? Because the sun is shining, a little chilly, but it's going to be a beautiful day. It is another beautiful day. And uh, if you remember last week, we studied about not being anxious or worried about our lives. Instead of being worried, we learned that we should turn our minds to the kingdom of God. And, and while it can be very easy and tempting to worry and be anxious about things like money or food or clothing or school, in this lesson, we're going to learn the reasons why we shouldn't worry. Can you tell us a little bit about our Bible story before we get going? Well, a little bit. Uh, we're going to study King Jehoshaphat. And he was the king of Jer uh, Judea about 850 years before the birth of Christ. And he was a very, very religious king. He worshipped the Lord, he honored the Lord in everything he did. And what we're going to see in today's story is that three separate nations are coming to attack Judea and Jerusalem. And while Jehoshaphat became frightened when he first heard the news. What he did was go to the Lord in prayer and ask for guidance and for protection. And that's what we're going to study about today, is how God will respond if we ask when we're fearful of things. And, and we're going to learn about how thankfulness, how being thankful to God, can defeat fear, defeat, not just make it go away for a little while, but it can, it can defeat it. It can crush our fears. It can, it can erase our anxiety. And um, when we go to prayer and thankfulness, we can find that that helps us, that strengthens our faith and helps deepen our trust in God. The lessons we're going to learn about today related to how fear and thankfulness are related include how important it is to talk to the Lord about our fears. He doesn't look, the God, God doesn't want us to be afraid, but he knows that we'll be tempted to be afraid and that our emotions will take over and we can get anxious about things. But he wants us to turn to him in those times. And when we do that, it's important that we remember the promises he has made to us. He loves us. He loves us. He doesn't want the people he loves to be afraid. He's our friend and he will provide for us. And we'll be less fearful when we remember those promises. And when we're fearful or anxious, we also need to think about what God has already done for us, what Jesus did for us. He died for us for, to cover our sins so that we could be made right with God. And he'll continue to provide for us even when the times are kind of scary. Yes, because so, he promised us that he would always be with us. And the one thing we can always hold on to, God can never break a promise. It's not in his DNA, not in his personality. He'll never break a promise. So when you're feeling fearful, we're also going to see how saying those promises out loud just saying them to yourself god loves me when i'm afraid when we say it out loud god loves me god will provide for me that just saying that out loud reminds us it quiets us and so those are the kind those are the lessons we're going to think about today so before we get started would you lead us in prayer oh most certainly our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you with uh, glad hearts, and we come to worship you and to give you thanks. And that's what we're studying about today, Lord, to give you thanks and praise in all things. You have promised never to leave us, to meet our needs, whatever that need is. And we know if we trust in you and talk to you and ask for your protection, Lord, you will provide it in all things. You have promised that you would meet our needs 
and we know you don't break your promises. So Lord, as we learn to be thankful, even under the most difficult of times, uh, we just pray for your guidance and your direction. And Lord, we're just grateful, Julia and I, that we have the opportunity to come to uh, do videos each, uh, each week and why we can't worship in person, we can certainly enjoy the opportunity of sharing your word with our young people. And uh, we ask that you bless our pastor, uh, be with those who attend church on Sunday, Lord. Uh, we just lift everybody up. We lift our whole church family up, Lord. We know we've been split and spread out uh, given current circumstances. But Father, we ask for a blending of hearts and a blending of worship in you that uh, we can have glad tidings even though we're in difficult times. So we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the opportunity of sharing your word in Jesus' name. Amen. So right. we are reading today from Second Chronicles chapter 20. Okay. And I'm going to start with verse 1 of chapter 20. And we're also reading out of the Children's International Version. So if you're in King James or New King James, it will read a little different. Later, some people came to start a war with Jehoshaphat. They were the Moabites, Amorites, and some Minimites. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, a large army is coming against you from Eden, Edmund, and they are coming from the other side of the Dead Sea. They are already in Tamar, which is also known as En Gedi. Continuing on verse 3, Jehoshaphat was afraid, so he decided to ask the Lord what to do. He announced that no one in Judah should eat during the special time of prayer to God. So he called for the whole nation to fast. He did. Yeah. And the people of Judah came together to ask the Lord for help. They came from every town in Judah to ask for his help. The people of Judah and Jerusalem met in front of the new courtyard in the temple of the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood up before them. He said, Lord, you are the God of our ancestors. You are the God in heaven. You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. You have power and strength. No one can stand against you. O oh God, you forced out the people who lived in this land. You forced them out as your people Israel moved in. And you gave this land forever to the descendants of your friend, Abraham. They, they lived in this land and had bent, built a temple for worshiping you. We're talking about the Israelites. Trouble may come to us. It may be war, punishment, sickness, or a time of hunger. If it comes, we will stand before you and before this temple where you have chosen to be worshipped, we will cry out to you when we are in trouble. Then you will hear us and save us. But now, here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Edmund. You wouldn't let the Israelites enter their lands when the Israelites came out of Egypt. So the Israelites turned away and did not destroy them. But see how they repay us for not destroying them. They have come to force us out of your land, meaning God's land. And you gave us this land as our own. Then the Spirit of the Lord entered Jehaziel. Jehaziel was Zechariah's son. Zechariah was Benahiah's son. Benahiah was Jael's son. And Jael was Madahananian's son. Jehaziel was a Levite and a descendant 
descendant of Asfa. He stood up in the meeting and he said, Listen to me, King Jehoshaphat. Listen, all you people living in Judah and Jerusalem. The Lord says to you, Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this large army. The battle is not your battle. It's God's battle. Tomorrow, go down there and fight those people. They will come up through the pass of Ziz. You will find them at the end of the ravine that leads to the desert of Jeruel. Continuing in verse 17, it says, You won't need to fight in this battle. Just stand strong in your place. You will see the Lord save you. And Judea and Jerusalem, don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. The Lord is with you. So go out against those people tomorrow. Jehoshaphat bowed his face to the ground, and all the people of Judea and Jerusalem bowed down before the Lord, and they worshipped him. Isn't it interesting? God is telling them they don't have to fight the battle. He's going to take care of everything. So Jehoshaphat's army went out into the desert of Tekoa early in the morning. And as they starting out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, people of Judah and Jerusalem. Have faith in your Lord your God. Then you will stand strong. Have faith in the Lord's prophets. Then you will succeed. Jehoshaphat listened to the people's advice. Then he chose men to be singers to the Lord. They were to praise the Lord because he's holy and wonderful. And they marched in front of the army and they said, Thank the Lord. His love continues forever. And they began to sing and praise God. And the Lord set ambushes. He set them for the people of Ammon, Moab, and Edom. They were the ones who came to attack Judah. And they were defeated. The men of Ammon and Moab started to attack the men from Edom. They killed and destroyed them. After they killed the men from Edom, they killed each other. Isn't it interesting that the Israelites didn't have to do any fighting? Mm -hmm. All they had to do was praise God and worship God, and God took care of everything. So we read in 25, it says, Jeho Jehoshaphat and his army came to take valuable things from the dead bodies. They found many supplies, much clothing, and other valuable things. They were more than they could carry away. There was so much, it took three days to gather it all. On the fourth day, Jehoshaphat and his army met in the valley of Bakra, and there they Praise the Lord, giving thanks to God again. That is why the place has been called the Valley of Bacra to this day. Then Jehoshaphat led all the men from Jerusalem and Judah back to Jerusalem. The Lord had made them happy because their enemies were defeated. The Lord had made them happy because their enemies were defeated. And they knew that they... They, they, God took care of them, that God protected them and provided them. So what God is showing in this story is that we need to be thankful even before he, we see the evidence of what he's done. Not because of what he's going to do, but what he's done in our past lives. He has done so much for each and every one of us, and we could all write pages of events that God has played a special role in our lives in. So we need to give thanks for what was done in the past, knowing if he's done it in the past, he'll do it in the future. So when we think back over this story, there were some kind of key points. Rudy, can you tell us a little bit about the bad news that the messengers brought to King Jehoshaphat? Yeah, it was pretty bad news. Judea and Jerusalem were not a large country at that time, and they didn't have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. 
So there was three different countries with their armies coming to destroy, not just to attack, but to destroy the people of Israel. And, and where did they gather? Where did the king, the people of Judah, the people of Jerusalem, where did they all gather? They went to the house, or what we call the temple in, uh, old, in biblical days, where God had said, this is where I will rest and this is where my name will be. And they worshiped in front of the temple. They not only worshiped, and that means prayer and ask, they also fasted. So, and it wasn't just a few people. If you read the story, it says all of Judea and Jerusalem worshiped and praised God and then asked God for protection. And they knew that they were facing difficulties and that the best, wisest advice they were going to get about those difficulties was going to come from God. So they went to where? They found God. What did what did Jehaziel tell the king and the people? Well, God spoke to him and told him that the people should not be fearful, that they should gather and they should stand in front of the enemies and that God would protect them and that they would not fight the battle, but God would fight the battle and would show his power over all the earth as he looked in, uh, at the three different countries that wanted to destroy the people of Israel. Sometimes God's plans and what, we, what God tells us, sometimes they don't always make a lot of sense. No, you could look at it this way. Say you were going to enter a race and you had a good friend and that friend said, but to win the race, you're going to have to run really slow. You'd look at him and say, that's kind of crazy. Why would I do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But imagine if God spoke to him and said, that's how you win the race. And that's kind of what was happening exactly. here. Exactly. They were told to go, stand, sing. Not to go draw swords and arrows, but stand in front of their enemies and sing and worship God and that God would defeat him, the, uh, defeat the uh, enemy. And that's exactly what happened. So who walked out, who marched out in the front of the army? It was singers, and the singers also yeah. included women and children. Not, no. not the biggest soldiers, not the not cannons. No, no cannon, no big guys. They went it, out singing. What were they singing about? They were giving thanks for all that God had done already in their lives and asking for God's protection against the enemy and claiming victory. They were claiming that they've already won the battle because God said so and they had faith in God. So they're walking out in the face of their enemies and they're singing, thank the Lord, his love continues forever. Yes. Yeah. So what did God cause the three armies to do? Turn on each other. Two armies attacked one and then the two surviving armies attacked each other and slaughtered each other. And imagine it took three whole days to gather up the spoils from the battle. So there was a lot of people who died in those three armies that it would take uh, the people of Israel three days just to gather the spoils. And that's, and that's what they found after the, those three armies killed one another and the people from Judea were safe, that they were able to find provisions, clothes, valuables, the, the spoils of war is what they're referred to as. And they were blessings to them. 
who had their faith in God, who sang his praises, and left the whole situation in his hands for their guidance. And they, their prayer, remember their prayer as they were singing, was thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. His and love then, continues forever. Yeah, yep. And then on the fourth day, they just didn't go back home with all their spoils from the battle. On the fourth day, the entire nation again went and worshiped God and gave thanks. And we must always have a thankful heart for when God wins all these small victories for us every day in our lives. We need just to be thankful to our Lord and have faith that no matter what we come up against, He is there with us. Amen. Amen. So I'll close in prayer. I want you to remember that no matter how hard things get, we have pandemic, we are not able to go to the places we want to go to all the time right now, we have some very difficult political conversations going on in our country, our world is topsy-turvy, and no matter how difficult or strange all of this gets, our response is to thank God. For his many blessings and ask for his continued protection. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for the Bible that you've given us to learn from. We thank you for your son Jesus Christ and the way he loved us so hard that he made it possible through his suffering to be right with you. And all this makes it possible for us to come every day, every minute face to face with you in our hearts so that we can tell you when we need you because we're scared and to help us not be frightened of what's going on and to teach us what you would have our next step be and Lord help us always remember that no matter what other things you would have us do we thank you we remember your many blessings we remember your many promises and those are the weapons that we can use when fear and anxiety tries to settle in our hearts. And we thank you, Lord, for that promise and for this day. And in Jesus' name we say, Amen. Amen. Well, you guys have a great day. We'll see you. Have a good week. Have a good day. Uh, if you're watching this on the same day or the next day after we've recorded it, we hope that you're able to get outside and marvel in some of the amazing Half Moon Bay beautiness that surround us. And have a good one. All right. We look forward to talking to you next week. Bye.